there's a question that's uh, sometimes, uh, well, yeah, fairly often asked about pumps, uh, centrifugal pumps, and that is um, whether the pump is actually pulling in the liquid. Is it is the pump does the pump suck in the liquid or not? Uh, yeah, I know not it, not everybody's asking that, but uh, you know some people are. <laughs> so the 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 the, the theory, I think, uh, for some most people is that it doesn't. It doesn't suck in. The, the, the fluid is there, and it's, it's just going to go into the pump. And here's what I think their uh, reasoning is. So let's say we have a um, typical, typical pump system, the tank, pump, and uh, the discharge going off somewhere. And um, so we have liquid here all over, and let's say we put a pressure gauge here. What we're going, we're going to measure some pressure at this point. And that's because we have liquid in this, uh, in this reservoir, and uh, it, all the liquid in this line here will be in, have a little bit of pressure. So we're going to r read some pressure here. So people who will say that, uh, well, this positive pressure here, it's basically pushing liquid everywhere and into the pump. And then it gets into the pump, impeller vanes catch it, zoom it around the casing, and uh, out it goes. So um, that's pretty well the, uh, the, the thinking. However, they haven't considered uh, that the pump itself, there's a, the, as the liquid gets into the pump, it has to go through the impeller eye. The eye is quite a bit smaller than uh, the uh, suction pipe, so that the liquid to get into the eye has to increase its velocity. And if it increases its velocity, as we know from Bernoulli's principle, that if the velocity increases, the pressure has to drop. Uh, that's what happens in a venturi. Let's say you have a, a restriction in a line, that's what a venturi is. You have liquid coming in here at a certain pressure and velocity. To get through the restriction, the flow, the velocity has to go up. If velocity goes up, pressure has to go down. So that's basic conservation of energy for liquids. Uh, kinetic energy, the velocity goes up. One, some other form of energy has to go down, and that's going to be pressure energy. So pressure will go down. So what happens at the pump is a similar, similar story. If I graph the pressure here, uh, let's say on the y-axis I've got going to have pressure. On the x-axis that's just going to be location. If I follow the pressure, the fluid particles, we're going to have positive pressure. It's going to drop a little bit because there's a little bit of friction. At this point I'm going to measure positive pressure. But as it gets into the eye, the pressure is going to drop. And uh, it's going to drop because the fluid has to accelerate and get into the eye. And then as it gets through the eye onto the impeller plate, blades, the pressure is going to rise up to the discharge pressure, and that's going to be the maximum pressure that the pump can produce. So, what we can see then is that the pressure is much lower here. So, if the pressure is lower, that means that somehow it's pulling on the liquid and sucking the liquid into the pump, right? So, you see, it's a kind of a yes-no answer. Yes, if you look at it from the uh, outside point of view only, and no, if you look at what's happening at the eye of the impeller and uh, the pressure generation of the blades after, then you're going to see that the low pressure is actually helping to pull, suck the liquid into the pump. And that's the story. All right? Bye. Timmy's teacher asked the class, what is the chemical formula for water? Timmy pipes up and replies, H-I-J-K-L-M-N-O. Timmy's teacher asks, where did you get that from? Timmy replies, well, yesterday you said it was H to O.